where he studied digital electronics after some introductory material on Boolean algebra, elementary logic gates, and combinational circuits, you're introduced to this weird thing, your first sequential circuit with two crisscrossing NAND gates, and it makes very little sense. You're told it's a flip-flop, a circuit that remembers one bit. Some people call it a latch and say a flip-flop only for edge-triggered memory cells, but we won't bother with that distinction today. Okay, so you can follow it through, you can see that the truth table is correct, that when you pull down the active low set input, then the Q output is set to one and so forth. Yeah, it works out. But it still feels really weird. How did anyone come up with this? You get the feeling they had a few too many drinks that day. You see that it kind of works, but you have no idea why. Let's fix that. Welcome to Frank Diana Explains. I am a full professor in the Department of the Science and Technology of Computers at the University of Cambridge. I am an electronic engineer by training, and I was a research scientist in industry before becoming an academic. And today, we're going to figure out together where this weird circuit comes from by reinventing it ourselves from scratch, which is one of the best ways to really understand anything, really. If you find this useful, please leave a like on the video. It's a very expensive way for you to say thank you, and it really helps the channel attract new viewers. The rules of our game are we must build a circuit that stores one bit. We must build it out of fundamental logic gates and or and not, and both the input and the output to our circuit must be the one and zero voltage levels accepted by our fundamental logic gates. The first thing that comes to mind is to have a bit that's the output of some logic gate and to recirculate it so that if I had a zero, I still get a zero, and if I had a one, I still get a one. A NOT gate would not work here because it would flip the value every time it goes round, but if I stuck two NOT gates together, then the loop would work. You know, a zero would become a one and then a zero, remain a zero, and a one would remain a one. I could also use an OR gate where the other input is set to zero because zero or zero is zero and zero or one is one. In other words, is zero or anything equals that same thing. So the OR gate with one input at zero outputs whatever is on the other input. And uh, the other input is, is the one where I get a loop back from the output. And I could also do the same with an AND gate, this time by setting the other input to one because one and anything equals that thing. One and X equals X. So that's all very well, and I've made three variations of some circuit with a loop that remembers one bit. But the problem is, I can't write my own bit in there. The circuit just remembers whatever bit randomly got in that loop when I first powered up the circuit. Instead, if I'm going to treat it as a memory, then I would quite like to be able to write my own value of 0 over 1 in there. Thank you very much. Now, consider for a moment this other circuit made of a so-called single-pole double-throw switch. That is to say, a switch with three terminals that we might call A, B, and C, and with two stable positions in the left position of the lever, the switch electrically connects or short circuits the terminals B and C, whereas in the other position of the lever, it short circuits A and B. Now, if I wire up terminal A to logic level 1 and terminal C to logic level 0, and I use terminal B as my output, then in the left position of the lever, the switch outputs a 0, and in the right position of the lever, it outputs a 1. That's also a 1-bit memory just like uh, my circuit with a loop. It doesn't have a loop, uh, and unlike the previous attempt, I can even set it to one value or the other, which is good. The trouble is that uh, in order to set it, I must use my finger. Instead, uh, the rules of our game were that uh, the input must be the output of some other gates, and my finger is not the output of another gate, so it's uh, something that's outside the system, so it's not really allowed by our rules. Okay, so let's go back to the circuit we made uh, with an OR gate that was looped back on itself. When the other input is at zero, the other input of the OR gate, then the current logic value circulates forever. If I pull this other input up to one, then the output of the OR gate becomes one regardless of what, was it, what it was before. So I actually do have an input that lets me set the output to one. And trouble here is that I don't have a way to turn it back to zero. So I can write a one in this memory circuit, but only once. It's like a, a piece of paper with a tick box that I can uh, fill in with a marker but it's an indelible marker, so once I've made my tick mark, I can't erase it anymore. So we're taking a step forward towards a solution because I can drive this circuit from the input of another gate, but we're also taking a, a step backwards because I can only write a 1, but not a 0, whereas with a mechanical lever switch, I could write both a 0 and a 1. However, uh, if we use the dual arrangement uh, with the AND gate instead of an OR, then the non-looped input is left at 1, to let the current value circulate, but if I pull down that other input to logic zero, then the output of the AND gate becomes zero. And so I have written a zero into my circuit, uh, but I cannot bring, bring it back to one. So that's the dual of the other one, but uh, one or the other uh, gives me the opportunity to write 
uh, either one or zero. So it feels like uh, each of these circuits gives me half of the solution, and the smartest ones among you uh, will have already figured out that we could perhaps get the full solution simply by splicing these two loops together into one bigger loop that includes both the OR and the AND. So I loop my stored bit through both the AND and the OR and back in again, and I have two control inputs, one per gate, that I can use for writing my chosen value into the circuit. That's great. So these control inputs have a pass-through position, each of them has a pass-through position where uh, it does nothing and lets the previous value circulate, and that setting is the zero for the OR control input and one for the AND control input. But then, by setting one of those inputs to the opposite value, which uh, we could call the active value instead of the pass-through value, then I can write my chosen bit into the loop. And the trick is that if I want to write a 1, I must use the control input on the OR gate and bring it high, whereas if I want to write a 0, I must use the control input on the AND gate and bring it low. And I must activate a different input depending on the value that I want to write. There isn't a single control input where I can write a 0 or a 1 value. And of course, it makes no sense to activate both inputs at the same time. It's, it's an ambiguous instruction. Do I want my circuit uh, to remember a zero or to remember a one? If I activate both inputs, I'm not really saying uh, which I want. Now, the circuit doesn't actually care, uh, but it won't work as intended. It won't work as a flip-flop. Each of the two gates does exactly what I'm telling it to do, and the one that wins is the last one that plays, meaning the one that I read the app from, which in this case is, a, is the OR gate. But the circuit is in an inconsistent state, because previously the remembered bit that was circulating was the same at the output of both gates, and now it no longer is, which uh, it indicates an error condition. Anyway, this circuit that we built from first principles follows the rules of our game, does everything we wanted, and at last it actually makes sense. And in my opinion, digital electronic textbooks would be much clearer if they started with this, or something like this, as the first example of a sequential circuit. This is a flip-flop, just as much as the one with the criss-cross NAND or NOR gates, but here at least we understand perfectly what's happening and we have a pretty clear idea about the purpose and function of every part that we put in. And I'm confident that even a smart 10-year-old would understand this and, if suitably motivated, uh, would have no trouble building the circuit on a breadboard using physical electronic components. Now, why do the textbooks use this double NAND or double NOR gate arrangement instead? Because actually, as you probably know by now, Although the AND and the OR gate are primitive components from the viewpoint of Boolean algebra, from the viewpoint of the electronics that are used to implement them, they are not. They are not primitive. The NAND gate is primitive. It's a fundamental circuit that can be built using the fewest transistors. Whereas AND is actually physically implemented by adding a NOT gate after the NAND. You can build anything out of just NAND gates, or, or if you use the dual arrangement, uh, you can build anything out of NOR gates. You just choose one technology at the start and you stick with it throughout your chip. Uh, so the circuit with two NAND gates, or equivalently with two NOR gates, is the most elementary, is the most essential, the most fundamental, and the most economical from the implementation viewpoint. And that's why. That's what you get in the textbooks. But perhaps they are skipping a logical step. Fortunately, from a Boolean logic viewpoint, I the double NAND circuit is perfectly equivalent to the more easily understood one that we have just built. You can transform one into the other with two very simple manipulations. One, that double negations cancel out, obviously. And two, the Morgan's law, namely that not A or not B equals not A and B. And if this sounds puzzling, then you can just verify it with the truth tables. So let's uh, uh, do this transformation. Since the double negations cancel out, we can add them anywhere we like. And since we want to turn our circuit into two NAND gates, let's just add a double negation on the output of our AND gate so that it turns it into a NAND gate with the first uh, bubble of the negation. Now, as a side effect, the second bubble goes to uh, the input of the OR gate, and so um, why don't we just add a double negation onto the other input of the OR gate for symmetry, and then uh, the two bubbles adjacent to the inputs of the OR give us not A or not B, and we just said that by the Morgan's law that's equivalent to not A and B. And so we can replace this OR gate uh, with its negative inputs by a NAND gate. That's neat, because now we have two NAND gates. So the original AND gate has been turned into a NAND gate by the addition of a negation on its output, and the original OR gate has been turned into a NAND gate by the addition of negations on its inputs. And notice an interesting side effect of negating the control input of the former OR gate. Now, the pass-through position is 1 rather than 0, if I eliminate that uh, extra negation bubble by changing, by inverting the semantics of the two values. And so now, if the pass-through position is 1, it's the same 
uh, same value as for the control input on the other gate, which used to be the AND. And that's nice because it means both of these control inputs are now active low. If they are high, if they are at level one, they do nothing. Uh, but if I bring them to zero, then they do something. And it's nice to have this consistency between them uh, on both gates. I have to bring them to zero to do something. So I use one input, the one on the former AND gate, to put a zero into the flip-flop. So I'll call it reset. And I use the input on the other gate to put a one into the flip-flop. So I call it set. But they are active low, so I put a negation bar over them. And this, aside from a topological rearrangement that gives me this uh, crisscrossing, is exactly the formerly incomprehensible diagram that you find in a traditional textbook. And the rearrangement is done for symmetry and also so as to have all the inputs on the left and all the outputs on the right. Now I have a question for you because when, when someone else goes through it and does the explanation, it's very easy to say, yeah, 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 but then you, you actually, uh, is this something you would be able to, to still do on your own? So I want to check if you're still with me and have not fallen asleep. This circuit is now made of two NAND gates, two absolutely identical gates. So how is it possible that one of them has the set input and the other one has the reset input? both active low, of course, uh, which are two inputs that do rather different things. If the gates are absolutely the same and they appear in an absolutely symmetrical configuration, how is it possible that the two inputs don't both do exactly the same thing? This may sound slightly paradoxical at first, but if you've been following through, then it should not be hard to figure out why. And if you've got it, well done and congratulations. And feel free to write your answer in the comments, but please do so with ROT13 so that you don't spoil the fun for us. Okay, it's not difficult, but it's satisfactory when you figure it out. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, you know how you can give back a small thank you. If you have any questions about computing, computer technology, learning computing, or any of the topics we typically deal with on this channel, do stick them in the comments. You'll make me happy if you say the word dictionary in your comment, not in Grok13, just write it in plain text, uh, so that you can let me know that you watched until the end. Thank you, and goodbye.